G'day you bloody legends. Today I'm gonna to show you the app that I've been testing for the last couple of months. It's probably the most used app on my phone right now. It does full manual controls, long exposure, it shoots amazing photos, and it's dead set cheap for the next 48 hours. I'm gonna show you about a competition as well that you can win up to 600 bucks worth of lenses, cases, and they're pretty bloody good from this same company. Let's get into it. The app is called Reflex. It's been around for about 12 months. They've just relaunched it with some really, really impressive features as well as some high quality lenses to go onto your phone. The price of this app is what's called freemium, freemium. And basically you get the app itself for free. So you can use this for still photography, but uh, if you wanna do the long exposure stuff, which is what we're really going to concentrate here on this particular video, you're going to need to unlock that in within the app. And for the next 48 hours, it's three bucks, in fact it's $2.99 US, and that, that's peanuts. For what this thing can do, that's just bloody cheap as. Never before has an app on iOS been as inexpensive as what this is, we're talking about less than a cup of coffee, and it can do photos like this, 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 and this. It's just, it's bloody amazing. The app as you have it right now, without paying a single cent, well, you can do so many things with it. You can manually adjust the shutter speed, the ISO, the white balance, exposure compensation. You can turn on a histogram so you can see if you're peaking in the blacks or the whites. You've got focus peaking, zebra line. You can use all the lenses on your camera for free. Bloody amazing. When you go ahead and you can buy that in-app purchasing of the long exposure stuff, well, that just opens up a whole new world and that's what we're all about here. So let me show you some of the stuff that we can do. I'm gonna show you how we do long exposures during the daytime, and I'm gonna show you how I do long exposures in the night. Let's talk about this competition. You can win 600 bucks worth of premium lenses and cases from Reflex. There's the case right there, and here are the lenses. You've got a 60 millimeter telephoto lens. You've got a 10 times macro lens, a 75 millimeter long range macro lens, which is quite handy for spiders and stuff. And you've got a 210 degree fisheye lens, and that's kind of my favorite at the moment. I've been having a bit of fun with that at night time. We've got uh, an 18 millimeter wide angle lens and we've got a 1.3 three time zoom anamorphic lens. That is a pile of lenses and you can win all of this. This competition will be drawn on the 4th of March. What you need to do to enter is to take a photo with the long exposure new element on this app. And what you need to do is put it onto Instagram or Facebook. Make sure you tag reflex camera in that photo and make sure you put a hashtag of shot with reflex. Once you've done that, add that to your story in Facebook or Instagram so that the guys over at Relief Reflex can keep a track of all those people who've entered. So first prize will be all those lenses that I've just spoken to you about, plus a case, a metal case for your phone to use all these lenses. And there's going to be a second and third prize as well. And they're probably going to be in the, in the form of discount codes to their website. So uh, it's definitely worth entering this thing. It's going to be dead set easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in just a sec. So uh, make sure you do it. This morning when I woke up, there was quite a bit of storms going on which is unusual for here. My wife actually woke me up and said, go and take some photos, and I fell straight back asleep. So that didn't work out too well at all. But what I wanted to do was come out here to Mount Hope and see if I can get some long exposure photos with this app. We've got a couple of options here. We've got all this, uh, the rocks and the, the, the mountain up there behind me. But if I climb up just a little bit, I should be able to get a nice sort of uh, landscape, long exposure landscape photo out over the flatlands. So we'll see how we go. If you've watched any of the stuff that I've made before about long exposure photography, you'll know you're going to need something still and something moving. And because I live in Outback Australia, you need, uh, well, water's a good one, but we don't have a lot of that here. So because we've had that storm last night, I'm going to use these clouds and they're not moving that fast and what I like to do this is a tip if you don't do many long exposures with your phone on the tripod here I'm just doing a regular time lapse I've looked up and I thought oh, I think it's moving this way but it's pretty slow it's been going for a couple of minutes now I'll stop that I'll play that let it buffer and the clouds are moving this way so I'm going to set up the long exposure photo now that we know that the composition is right. I'm just gonna open the Reflex camera app here 
and I'm going to go to the ultra wide lens because we've got such a wide field of view here I want to use that wide angle lens and the composition that I'm using you can see this line in the rocks that is just here in front of us here off to the side and you can see that kind of V in the frame of the the clouds I want to use that as part of the composition so there's leading lines all through there I do expect the clouds to blur a little bit because I'm going to do probably a five minute long photo here. So the camera app is set up pretty well right. I look at the ISO down the bottom, it's sitting at 34 for long exposure stuff. During the daytime, I wanna keep that low anyway. The shutter speed is on 1708, that's pretty quick. Uh, and it's going to keep on taking those photos and stack them on top of each other. The focus is set to manual focus, it's at 0.85. I'm going to leave it there, but if I'm not sure about what the focus is at, I can hit that bottom de button down the bottom there, and it's going to put green over everything that is in focus, and that, that's quite a handy tool if you're not sure uh, exactly what's going on there. Now, to use the long exposure section, you'll go up to the top here with those aperture fins, go into there, and we're gonna turn that, hit the off button, turn it on, and we're gonna see a couple of things that have happened here. If you go up to the top, it's got M, which is motion blur, and then we've got L, which is for light trails. And I'll use that for star photography, and I'll show you that one a little bit later in the video. So I'll hit it back to M, and you'll see one thing that's changed here. Up the top right-hand corner, it's gone back to JPEG. And this is one of the limitations of this app at the moment. It will change in the future. But at the moment, for long exposure stuff, we can only shoot JPEG. Very important to remember. Um, but keep in mind, this thing's pretty bloody cheap, and we're going to get raw in the future. So to change the speed or the duration, at the moment it's 0.5, I'm just gonna to touch on that 0.5 and swipe up. And you can see there, it's just gonna go through um, multiple um, times. I'm gonna bring that back down to five minutes. There we go, five minutes is there. Now I'm just gonna hit the start button and that's it. While that's being taken, it's, in, it's important to remember a couple of things. One, it has to be on a tripod, it just has to be. And two, I only ever do that time-lapse thing when it's not absolutely obvious. If the clouds are not obviously moving this way, or the water is not obviously moving this way, I'll do that time-lapse trick. That's done now, let's have a look. It looks mint. It looks exactly as I expect it to look. The, the, the composition with the clouds with the V, the moving clouds, that line in the rock. I'm really bloody happy with that. So up here, what I want is hopefully um, this rock formation out here in front of us uh, across, the, across the little valley here. If I look at that composition, I've got the, the horizon coming out here where it's nice and flat. I'll leave that on the bottom third and then leave the rocky outcrop coming up into the frame. And I quite like that. So we'll set up the photo with the Reflex app. That five minutes is up, let's have a look. <laughs> it looks bloody awesome. I expect it to look awesome. It really does, it looks bloody awesome. Here, have a look at this. The, um, this is a JPEG file, and, and the, the long exposure functionality on this app, at the moment, is going to give you these JPEG files. So, that's gonna be a hurdle for some people. For some people, you're not going to care about it at all. The guys have actually told me that um, the raw functionality is coming to this. What happens is when you take this long exposure photo, you see it being built, and that's not something that you can see with raw, and that's, that's kind of cool. I like, I like being able to see that. You, something might happen in the frame that you don't necessarily see with the raw file and, you, and you're watching it and you go, well, shit, this just happened. I better start that again. But do it shooting raw, um, you're not going to see that until the end of it, then you might be disappointed. But it's kind of a way up. It, I don't think any way is, this way is the only way or this way is the only way. And for $2.99 for the next 48 hours, in my humble opinion, there's absolutely no reason at all that you can't have both of these on your phone. Now that it's night time, we're going to use the same app to do star trail photography as well as a little bit of light painting here. And we're going to use that light painting to paint some of the foreground subjects. And it's going to be really helpful because we're shooting in JPEG. This is one of the biggest benefits of shooting in JPEG for this sort of thing. There's plenty of downsides, but this is, I don't know, I think it kind of outweighs it. We're going to set up exactly the same way as what we did today, but we're going to do the long exposure mode is going to be on L down the bottom here instead of for that's for light trails instead of motion for the clouds and we're going to focus onto the stars i'll show you how to do that so 
So the focusing, we'll cover that first. Um, we go to manual focus, and what you can do now is pinch, and, pinch out on the screen, and you're going to be able to see the stars that are in the sky there. And then all you need to do is move that focus line, that manual focus where it says MF, that's your focusing. You're gonna move that up or down to adjust it to the stars. And you want it to be adjusted to the stars. It wants to be pin sharp stars. I find that with my phone, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, if I bring that to 0.78 right there, I know that's going to, for my phone, it's gonna be pin sharp. Check it with your phone. Start it with 7.8, and I think you're gonna be pretty well right. We're gonna open up that uh, long exposure mode there. Open up the long exposure with that aperture little icon down the bottom there. Make sure it's on L for light trails. And then we're gonna just check a few things. We're gonna check, make sure the ISO is pumped up as high as it will go. We're gonna change the shutter speed to one second, right there. When you do your test shooting, if you happen to do your test shooting, I'm not saying you have to, but you might do it to check your composition, but I'll show you how to cheat that in a second. When you go back and forward between long exposure and regular shooting, you can tend to lose that. So make sure you check it. To set up the composition of this, there's a few things that you can do. One is you might wanna look for the star trails, those circular star trails, in which case, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, go and point to South, and I did that in a previous video. I'll link it down the bottom there or up the top or wherever it is. Um, basically, you're gonna find South come a little bit above the horizon. You should be able to get nice circular star trails. You might look at something and go, that subject's really good. I want that to be the subject and the star trails just to bring a bit more life to that in an unusual photo. And in the Northern Hemisphere, you're looking for Polaris and do the same sort of thing. Once you're at that location and you want to, you found your subject that you wanna shoot, use a torch and we're just gonna shine it there. And you can see there, because we're in one second increment, it's gonna be a bit jerky. All those lines that are flying around the place, they're bugs. So don't stress too much about that. But I see there I want to go up a little bit. So I'm just gonna loosen that tripod and bring it up. Now that's all set up, that's, that's, that's it. There's nothing else to do. You can put your delay start on there, like your timer. Um, all we're doing here is shutter speed 100, ISO as high as it goes, oh, sorry, shutter speed one second, ISO as high as it goes, white balance, change it around however you like. I'll leave it on 4000, that's tend to be where I leave most things for nighttime photography. The exposure uh, compensation, just leave it where it is. There's really nothing else to do. We're gonna hit the shutter on this and I'm gonna do some light painting with this and you're gonna see the true benefit of having this JPEG over a RAW file. Like I said before, there's lots of benefits over RAW over JPEG, but this is kind of cool. We're gonna take the photo right now, hit the shutter button. As that's taking that photo, we're in bulb mode. So you see up the top there, there's actually a timer. It's gonna count down how fast or how long this is taking. I'm just gonna turn the brightness down on my torch. And we're going to just put the light across in front of the trees there. And you can see there on the screen, it's picked that up and it's built the photo. And I think down on the ground there a little bit more, I want some more torch torch light to light up those posts a bit better. So I'll go a little bit slower. Look at that. I think that's pretty bloody cool. So you can do all sorts of light painting with this and you check and check it as you go. So say for example, I wanted that tree on the right hand side to be brighter. I'm just gonna turn that torch up, turn it off, point it at that tree. You see? You can build it as you go. I've totally ruined that photo, that was too bright. But you can get the point that I'm trying to raise here. It's building that photo as we do this. And that is bloody amazing. Here's some examples of the photos I've taken with this app of Star Trails, it's pretty bloody amazing. This one here I took, it's like a six hour time, uh, six hour Star Trail photo um, because we're using uh, bulb mode on this.
the possibilities with this app is just bloody well endless. There's going to be some more tutorials on this channel here with light painting, actually light painting subjects, light painting patterns, because I can just see that the fact that you can build this on the back of the phone as you're doing this, it's kind of like the Olympus uh, live composition. And I've done some sensational photos with that Olympus cameras over the years doing that sort of light painting. This thing here, I think is going to do something very, very similar. So make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to do a lot more tutorials around light painting because we're starting to get into that Milky Way season very, very shortly. We're going to take some pretty creative photos here. And this app, I think, is going to feature in some of those videos pretty heavily because one is dead set inexpensive. It's $2.99 right now for the next 48 hours. And uh, you can do some pretty sensational things with it. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that video. It's a bloody long one. And uh, I'll see you next week. Catch you later.